Today was the test of one of the 15 floodgates that surround the hospital. This is one of the vehicular gates. It's one of the, it's the third largest gate of all the gates around the hospital. We chose it to test it for this, that reason, and it's the fact it's at the north side of the facility and won't disrupt any traffic. So uh, we tested that gate today to see, ensure it's going to operate properly, make sure it does what we think it's going to do, and give everybody the peace of mind that it does. Our testing today was set up by Rollins Construction, and basically what we did is we built a wall on the wet side of the gate, and that's holding the water in as we filled that area up with a fire hose. And so basically it took the water and put it into the drainage system of the gate. We plugged the drains in the bottom of the reservoir, the basin of the gate, and then so as the basin filled up, that lifted the gate up, and this temporary wall then will be taken down. Well, the gate actually operates under buoyancy. Uh, it has a reservoir underneath the gate. When that reservoir fills with water, as the water continues to rise, it lifts the gate up into a, a vertical position. So you have to have a lot of water to make it, make it raise, but it's set up so that the water that comes towards the facility is what raises the gate. About how long does that take to raise the gate? Depends on how fast the water is coming in. Today we're using a fire hose, so it took about 15 minutes. But if you had a total sheet of water covering the width of the gate, the gate would certainly raise a whole lot quicker. So the gates are designed only to raise to the level required um, by the water it's trying to protect the hospital from. Can you start looking out here in the whole north lot? When you look out, this whole thing was underwater. Pretty much to where I was standing, this is where the edge of the water was. And so when you look out, everything was probably about four, four and a half feet underwater from here. And all you saw was just a big sea of water, and you didn't know where the heck it came from. So when you start looking at these floodgates now, and what they could do is, as far as providing an area of safe haven for the patients, the staff, and everybody that's inside, I'm telling you, it lends itself to a sense of good. We're not going to have to have to have that level of urgency again. Well, the system is basically 15 gates and a flood wall. The flood wall has been designed to be two feet higher than the 100-year flood level, which provides a two-foot cushion, in, in speaking, based upon the flood of 2008. So we have a two-foot additional protection around the entire building. And it's comprised, again, of a, a flood wall and the 15 gates. In the event of a flood similar to 2008, um, the water won't come into the building as it did before. We have areas of safe refuge around the building that uh, give us an opportunity to stage equipment and materials if we needed to do so, and certainly gives us uh, plenty of area to evacuate patients if, in fact, we would ever have to do that again.